All right, thanks everybody for waiting. I'd like to call this meeting of the City of Santa Cruz Planning Commission to order. And can we start with a roll call of commissioners? Chair Kennedy. Present, just barely. Vice Chair Conway. Here. Commissioner Maxwell. Here. Commissioner pa uh, Hummet, Paul Hummus. Here. Commissioner Gordon. Here. And Commissioner McKelvey. Present. Um, Commissioner Maxwell's absent with notification. Dawson. I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, Sean. Uh, Commissioner Dawson, absent with notification. Are there any statements of disqualification on the agenda items tonight? Yes, I need to disqualify myself from the first agenda Same item. Same as last time. Same okay. as last time. I need to disqualify myself from the second item. Okay. So now I'd like to open the mic for oral communications. This is your chance for any item not on our agenda to come speak to us if you'd like to. Ideas, thoughts, suggestions, welcome. All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the approval of the uh, minutes. Um, so we'll just have a voice vote on approval of the minutes of August 3rd, 2023. Uh, we had one absent commissioner, correct? Yes. Okay. I was also absent. Okay, so it's just the three of us. Well, let's do a roll call just to make that really clear. Chair Kennedy. I uh, yes, I approve the minutes. Vice Chair Conway. I'll abstain because I was absent. Commissioner Maxwell. Also abstain. Paul Hummus. Yes. Gordon. Yes. McKelvey. Abstain. So we have one item on the consent agenda. And so I'd like to call for a roll call vote on that item. Chair Kennedy. Uh, yes. Vice Chair Conway. Yes. Commissioner Maxwell. Yes. Paul Hummus. Yes. Gordon. Yeah, you're just don't say anything. McKelvey. Uh, so these two commissioners are disqualified, so they just are, are not a vote at all. Uh, so the motion passes four votes for. That was the most charming piece of public correspondence I've ever seen, so thank you for that. All right, so let's get to the meat of the matter for tonight's meeting. Public, I'd like to open the public hearing on agenda item three, Sokal Avenue. Um, staff, can we get a report? Only. Yeah, because you can just roll if you'd like. Just got approved. The, uh, the yeah. Ferris wheel was on consent. Yeah. Yeah. You just, just yeah, you just needed, you could have said, yeah, it's fine. You're good. I mean, you, you can hang out in the audience if you want. Well, I, but, uh, you don't need to be here. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to listen. <laughs> I'm going to listen out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good evening, Chair Kennedy and members of the Planning Commission. My name is Tim Mayer, Senior Planner with the City. Uh, this evening's second agenda item is a proposed redevelopment of three adjoining parcels at addresses 513, 515, and 519 Soquel Avenue. Um, the project applicant requests approval of several entitlements, including a special use permit, design permit, tentative map, non-residential demolition authorization permit, residential demolition conversion authorization permit, heritage tree re removal permit, and a slope development permit to facilitate the, the redevelopment of the subject site. The project would combine the three existing lots while retaining their individual general plan and zoning designations, demolish the existing commercial building and residential building, and construct a four-story, approximately 54,486 square foot new mixed-use development. The development would consist of three new buildings, including two commercial residential mixed-use structures, in one residential building. Uh, the project provides approximately 1,510 square feet of commercial space and 36,559 square feet of residential area consisting of 43 rental dwelling units, including 26 single room occupancy units or SROs and 17 apartments. And please note that a pre-application for the project was deemed complete prior to the effective date of the city's objective standards and the project is therefore not subject to the citywide objective standards. Uh, shown here is the subject site, uh, bordered in red. 
The project area consists of an approximately 22,387 square foot or roughly a 0.51 acre, um, approximately L-shaped area made of three adjacent lots located at the corner of Soquel and May Avenues on the city's east side, approximately one block east of Ocean Street. Um, a lot survey appears on this slide depicting the locations of all property boundaries and the shapes and positions of the existing buildings. The contour lines indicate the topography of the site, indicating the relatively steep slopes, which in several places exceed 30%. The three lots which make up the project site each includes a different general plan land use designation, including MXVC, or Mixed Visitor Commercial, on the lot shown here in white, uh, LM, which is Low Medium Density Residential, for the lot shown in green, and CM, or Community Commercial, for the parcel shown here in yellow. The constituent parcels collectively have two different zoning designations. Uh, the lots colored yellow and white occur on land in the CC or community commercial zone district, while the parcel in green falls within the RL or multiple residence uh, low density zone. The MXVC general plan land use designation establishes a maximum FAR of 2.75 and a maximum density of 55 dwelling units per acre, while the CM designation sets a maximum FAR of 1.75 without any upper limit for residential density. Because two of the three primary components of the project um, would span portions of the project site in both the MXVC and CM land use designations, <coughs> which offer varying levels of maximum FAR, the project uses a more restrictive FAR of 1.75 across the entirety of the commercially zoned portion of the, of the project site in the base density plans. Um, a maximum residential density of 20 residential dwelling units per acre applies in the site area um, shown here with general plan designation of LM or the green region. Um, the project site also occurs on land regulated by the east side business area improvement plan, while the lot here shown in white um, on the bottom of the screen falls on land within the Ocean Street area plan, and the project is required under SB 330 or the Housing Accountability Act to fulfill all objective criteria of both of those area plans. Shown at the top of this slide is a photo of the project site taken across uh, Soquel Avenue, immediately south of, of the proposed redevelopment site. Uh, visible here is the existing commercial building um, shown uh, on the left-hand side of the screen, um, which is adjacent to the project site, and the commercial building on the project site, kind of in the middle of the screen, and vacant single-family dwelling to the east, shown here in the bottom, kind of expanded. Uh, the house is in a state of significant disrepair. This slide shows a photo of the site slightly to the southwest compared to the image on the previous slide. In the foreground here is Soquel Avenue, the existing commercial building to be retained at the west of the project site, including the professional offices on the upper floor and uh, auto body shop on the lower or ground floor, along with Brants of 40 Plaza to the east um, are shown on this, uh, this slide. Slide here shows the site near the intersection with May Avenue. The existing commercial building, again, is shown at the adjacent property to, um, with the building to be retained, visible here. And the nature of on-street parking is additionally visible with many of the uh, curbs adjacent to the project site striped red. This photo shows the existing site and residential uses further along May Avenue adjacent to the project site. And again, uh, the nature of the surrounding single-family residential development in the neighborhood um, on-street parking that's currently in place is shown here. Uh, the project proposal was initially submitted for city review early as an SB 330 pre-application, which was not pursued for some time and allowed to lapse. A formal application then was submitted for the project in February of 2020, uh, 2022, excuse me, and deemed complete pursuant to the Housing Accountability Act. On May 18th of 2022, a community meeting was held consistent with the city's policy for public outreach to gather input from members of the community uh, related to the proposal. Approximately 20 members of the community attended the meeting and provided a range of feedback related to expected impacts and modification of the project site and neighborhood anticipated to result from the project. Uh, during the meeting, participants generally expressed support for the project. Overall, both before and after the community meeting, members of the public have expressed a range of comments regarding the project including concerns about the supply of off-street parking provided with the project relative to the expected demand, and have expressed reservations about an expected loss of available on-street parking and increase in vehicular traffic to the area. A number of comments have also centered on pedestrian safety, 
particularly related to the crosswalk spanning Soquel Avenue near the corner with May, with a number of commenters uh, requesting installation of, of rapid flashing uh, rectangular beacons or equivalent. Residents of uh, homes on May Avenue have described problems of stormwater runoff at the project site. Other comments have focused on the potential loss of sunlight exposure due to casting of shadows induced by the proposed new buildings, along with impacts associated with the proposed tree removal, while other comments have remarked about characteristics of the, of the proposed architecture. Still other feedback has included concerns about the impact of the displacement of the existing ophthalmologist practice, which occupies the commercial building which is proposed to be demolished. As mentioned earlier, the project would include three new buildings, including uh, 43 residential units and approximately 1,510 square feet of ground floor commercial space with a total of just over 52,000 square feet of gross floor area. The development um, encompasses a 17,120 square foot uh, mixed use building, which is called building A here at the kind of bottom right hand side of the screen. Uh, with 26 single room occupancy units or SROs, including one manager unit. Uh, there'd be a second 19,160 square foot building called building B with 14 residential units, including 10 one bedroom units, three three bedroom units, and one two bedroom unit um, here at the northeast corner of the project site. And a third building, um, or building C, which would be 1,865 <laughs> square feet in size containing three residential units, including two studio units and one one bedroom unit here at the project's northwest. Um, the, as mentioned, the entirety of the commercial square footage of the mixed-use structures, both building A and building B, uh, would front Soquel Avenue at ground level here. Um, above a podium situated mostly underground, which would enclose vehicular and bicycle parking, storage space, supportive features, and residential units placed above on the second through fourth floors, of each of the two mixed use buildings, building A and building B. <coughs> Notably, the applicant has made a number of revisions to the project design compared to that included in the pre-application, including an enlargement of the commercial space from 1,166 square feet as originally proposed uh, to approximately 1,510 square feet. There'd also be a reconfiguration of the layout um, compared to the prior design to incorporate commercial space fronting with Soquel, uh, Soquel Avenue in both buildings A and building B, where originally it was only in building B. There would be a, also a relocation of the um, resident amenity space from the ground floor of building A to accommodate additional commercial square footage dependent on pedestrian activity for, uh, for success of that tenant. And rearrangement of the community lounge to include amenity space in both building A and building B for a more equitable distribution between the buildings. Finally, relocation of the ground floor residential storage space to the area below the podium. Um, altogether, the modifications made through the course of the project uh, review and from pre-application to present um, submittal are enhancements to the project design, providing greater <coughs> consistency with the goals and policies of the general plan and the Eastside Business Area Improvement Plan, as well as the Ocean Street Area Plan. Shown on this slide is the design of each level of the development from the area below the podium shown over here on the upper left through the fourth floor shown on the lower right hand side of the screen. Um, the space below the podium would accommodate structured parking with a total of 29 auto parking spaces as currently proposed, as well as a secure bicycle facility in the kind of um, this trapezoidal area here. Um, also resident storage space and three mechanical and storage rooms in addition to two staircases and an elevator. Um, at ground level over here, first floor, the project would feature two distinct commercial spaces, as I mentioned before, including 810 square feet and 700 square feet in size, um, and uh, also supportive um, facilities, including a trash and recyclables room and, and restroom. Uh, near the southwest portion of the site, um, the design includes a separate standalone building, which is shown over here. Uh, it's kind of a separate area. Um, that would be building C with a first floor living space elevated above ground level configured to allow passage of vehicles from May Avenue to the subterranean parking um, facility, both below uh, buildings A and B. So cars would actually drive uh, from May Avenue, pass under building C and access the subterranean garage over here. On the second through fourth floors, the development in buildings A and B include additional dwelling units along with terraces and balconies. 
Renderings of the proposed elevations are included here. The architecture of the buildings can be described as modern and urbanist in design with building planes of fiber, cement, and stucco uh, featuring prominent commercial canopies and residential balconies introducing a distinctive color palette. Um, ample glazing facing Soquel Avenue creates a prominent feature nearest the public right of way, inviting interest at ground level and activating the street by attracting attention to the interior of the project's commercial space. Uh, trees to be retained on site, um, fronting May Avenue and shown on the lower right hand side of the screen here, uh, which provide further continuity with the nature of the existing development. This slide displays building and street sections of the proposed project, showing the height and massing of the new buildings compared with existing structures in the vicinity. The middle section near the middle of the screen here show the building's compatibility with structures in the vicinity, providing a transition in height, bulk, and mass between the Plaza Brands of 40 building to the east or on the right and the existing commercial building to the west on the left. Additionally, the bottom image it illustrates the staggered nature of the building's uh, design, the project's design, in which the height of the buildings fronting Soquel Avenue steps successively down toward May Avenue, providing consistency with the character of the single family neighborhood along May Avenue. To address California's need for affordable housing, the state of California, as I'm sure you're all aware, adopted its density bonus law several decades ago to encourage the provision of subsidized dwelling units by offering to developers a combination of benefits and incentives, including the option to request exceptions to codified development standards, which are called waivers and incentives concessions. Uh, by providing the required number of below market rate dwelling units, an applicant can request development in densities above those maximally allowed typically by code. Uh, the project seeks to achieve a 35% density bonus for a total of 12 additional market rate units, which was calculated as the number of density bonus units um, accommodated for each constituent part of the project site or for each of the individual uh, three individual parcels uh, with numeric rounding applied pursuant to uh, code allowances by providing 20% of the base number of units for a total of seven units restricted to occupancy by low-income households. Um, such a qualifying project, as um, again, I'm sure you're all aware, is also eligible to receive three incentives or concessions um, and an unlimited number of waivers. And the applicant has requested four total waivers, including uh, the first for reduced setbacks, as proposed the standalone building or building C, and the portion of building B proposed to be on the RL zone lot. And I'll kind of jump back over here. So building C and this portion of building B um, would each uh, um, have reduced setbacks of with rear setbacks of six feet where 10 feet is minimally required by code. Um, also, the uh, left and right setbacks of the building on the RL zone lot would also measure six feet, whereas side setbacks of approximately 10 feet or one foot of height or one foot, excuse me, of setback for each three feet of height are required by code. Also requested as a waiver is increased height. Um, the proposed development includes two buildings, each with four stories in the CC district, where the taller of the two would have a height of approximately 50 feet, which is above the maximum codified threshold of three stories and 40 feet in the CC zone. Also on the RL zone uh, parcel, uh, two stories and 30 feet. There'd also be a, re a waiver requested for reduced open space requirements or reduced open space allowance. Uh, building C provides 164 square feet of open space directly accessible to the residential units in the form of attached balconies, while the regulations of the RL zone require provision of minimally 400 square feet of open space per residential unit. Um, also proposed, the one-bedroom units of Building B would have 66 square feet of open space, which is slightly below the codified threshold, which requires 150 square feet of common open space easily accessible to the uh, residential units, along with 100 square feet of private open space per residential unit. Finally, uh, the fourth waiver requested is increased FAR, and a waiver from the standard maximum FAR of 1.75 applied to the area of the site zone CC was requested for the development of the site allowable the, by the general plan with a density bonus applied. Um, per state density bonus law and the city zoning ordinance, the applicant is, request, is required to provide justification for any requested waivers. And the city must approve the request unless it can make findings of specific adverse impact to public health or safety or similar detrimental effect of the physical environment based on substantial evidence 
Uh, notably, no evidence of such public health or safety impacts appears evident based on information available to staff. To staff. City's Municipal Code, Section 2416.020, requires the residential developments creating five or more uh, new dwelling units provide 20% of the dwelling units as inclusionary or, or affordable units, which must be made available to uh, for lease to low-income households at an affordable rent. Inclusionary units are restricted in perpetuity to households earning 80% or less of the area median income, or AMI. Inclusionary housing requirements for SROs further specify that minimally 20% of the base number of dwelling units be rented to eligible households at the very low income or BLI level, with rents restricted to 30% or 50% of the area median income. The plans provide 20% of the number of base density units as affordable units for each of the three project components, equating to the number of inclusionary units um, as shown in the table listed on this slide. The project provides one low-income unit, as shown here, on Building C, uh, two low-income units in Building B, and four very low-income or VLI units in Building A. And this inclusionary requirement also fulfills the affordable housing requirements per state density bonus law. The trip generation memorandum uh, prepared by Kimley Horn provides information about the expected number of vehicular trips generated by the proposed project. The memo reports that after accounting for the trips generated by the existing uses, the development is estimated to generate a total of 149 new daily trips with 23 new trips in the morning or a.m. peak hour and 26 new trips in the evening or p.m. peak hour. Uh, based on the data provided, the number of net new peak hour trips falls below the threshold requiring preparation um, of a traffic impact or transportation impact study by the city. Uh, conditions of approval require fulfillment of all requirements of various city departments. Among other items, the Public Works Department will require installation of flashing beacons at the crosswalk spanning Soquel Avenue near its intersection with Ocean View Avenue, which is about a block east of the project site, which will allow for enhanced pedestrian safety um, and safe access to the project site, as well as the adjacent bus stop. Um, the Public Works Department has also expressed the requirement for uh, installation of a new street light and a wider sidewalk along Soquel Avenue. The project proposes removal of 31 total trees, including 10 heritage sized trees. This placement of the proposed buildings would conflict with those uh, trees' current locations. An arborist report was prepared for the project, providing an evaluation of the condition of each tree on site includes recommendations for management of the trees to remain both during and after project construction. Conditions of approval have been applied requiring conformance with the report's recommendations, <laughs> including protection of existing trees to be retained on site and replacement of each tree proposed to be removed with minimally one tree of 24 inch box size according to the uh, city council resolution in effect. Uh, one thing to note about the project is the trees adjacent to the single family homes uh, to the north of the project site would, would be retained. So this portion of the project site after uh, development, if entitled, would remain um, largely as shown here in the existing condition. All necessary findings have been made uh, by staff to support the proposed project. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission acknowledge the environmental determination and approve the special use permit, design permit, tentative map, non-residential demolition authorization permit, residential de demolition conversion authorization permit, header tree removal permit, and slope development permit, and grant the density bonus request to exceed height thresholds, reduce open space requirements, and obtain reduced setbacks, and increase floor area ratio for the, for the proposed project based on the findings below and attached to the staff report as condition A, excuse me, as, as exhibit A. Uh, staff and the applicant are available to answer questions. Um, thank you very much for your time, and notably, the provided a colors and materials board which is available on the side of the building on the side of the room over there so um it's I, i'm told that the samples may not be totally attached to the material board so it's lying down so if, if you'd like to see the material board it's available there thanks so much well let's have some questions and then take a minute we can all walk over and check that out sure do you have a sharpie so we can just cross out the colors we don't like or i'm teasing of a pen <laughs> Any uh, commissioner, <coughs> commissioner questions for staff at this point, or the applicant? <coughs> commissioner Gordon? Go ahead. Thank you. Oh. Commissioner Conway, Vice Chair Conway. Well, first of all, I just want to say it's a great project. It's a 
I love seeing infill, complicated infill projects like this. So I'm excited about the use of that space. I'm excited about the fact that ideally you're mapping them and they would be for sale because it's a really critical missing market piece um, and they're affordable by design, which is great. Um, I do have some questions. Some are gonna be answered over here that I was curious about. Um, I'm wondering if you can give me, I mean, I, I think I probably will have another question. I need to look at specifically at those materials, but. Um, well, let's go to some other questions with, and then we can take yeah. a minute and go check them out. Okay, that's, that's fine. fine. I mean, we can do whatever yeah. we want. No, that's so. fine, yeah. Mm -hmm. All okay. right, Vice Chair Conway. Yeah, I would like to um, address the use of the commercial space. Um, I have questions about um, the efforts that have been made. I appreciate that in the redesign, the commercial space was bigger. Um, I am very concerned about the loss of that space for the existing business, which obviously the existing business isn't going to go on forever, um, or it, it, exactly as it is, but it plays a really vital role in this community. And I'd like to know the steps that have been taken and might could still be taken um, to try to preserve that business. That's a very good question. Hello, my name is Daniel Selprigan. I'm from Swift Consulting. Um, yes, we have reached out to Dr. <coughs> Babad um, and uh, the owner is happy to help with relocation. We've also offered him like first refusal on the commercial space that we're going to be building. Um, at the moment, he's declined that because he also needs to keep an operation and can't stop his business and then start up again. Um, but we have made efforts to make this as smooth, smooth as possible for him. Um, the owners, the, the property owner is happy to pay some relocation to him in the amount of possibly two to three months um, and also help him whatever way he can. We're in dialogue. Uh, we haven't spoken in a while. We've been trying to get this project to completion into hearing. And once it is hopefully approved, we will continue those dialogues with him. Um, would you consider expanding the commercial space a bit further? It looks like it would probably require um, giving up some of the other space. Um, it, would you consider doing that? Is that possible? Yes, we are. Is that in light of, can I ask you a question? Is that in light of him relocating there once it's all he, yeah. And preserving we, it as an ophthalmology office. Yes, I think we're definitely open to that. At the beginning of this conversation with him, there was this anticipation that he may retire as well. Uh, that I don't believe is the case, but time has passed and we probably need to, to continue that dialogue with him. Um, I think we are going to make some slight changes. We're going to make that slightly bigger anyway that... There's, there's a slight jog there, which I think would be better if it was a straight line. Mm -hmm. um, we're definitely open to making it, we're definitely open to that. Um, but our, under, our current understanding is that he does not want to come back because of the delay in time of doing business. He can't stop for construction and come back. And I appreciate that. So it's, a, it's not an easy situation to, to conquer, you know, but um, it is... We are, have made attempts. We're going to continue to make attempts. And uh, the the owner, Shay, Shal Shay Talbot, unfortunately can't be here, um, but I know I've been in dialogue with him. He's actually um, in Hawaii and caught up in all the fires there. And he was he sends his apologies. He can't be here because of flight reschedules and things like that. He was planning on flying back to make this meeting. But I just received an email from him about this very specific topic because it came up. Um, we came up um, today. So, yes, he's happy to pay relocation costs. He's happy to make this easy for um, that tenant. I think he's very sympathetic to the situation there. Um, but the, that building is, was, it's an old building built in 1958. It needs to be remodeled. It needs to be improved. Um, he'll make this as smooth as he can. Um, so, and what uh, type of commercial uses were you anticipating with the size of, of, of the space that we're allowed so far? Because it is, it's an important place to have a commercial use. 
there's a lot of commercial needs? Yeah, that's a good question. And we've been discussing this with um, real estate agents, commercial brokers, and actually through the course of this project, commercial space has changed enormously. And I think that's something we need to reconsider as well. Uh, but currently our feeling is that it's going to be very professional, very similar use that is now um, potentially doctor, uh, professional um, attorneys, architects, uh, people that need appointments, um, people, you know, different kind of medical office and commercial use that would be similar to what's in, in being used now. But I think my only caveat is, you know, that's still, the commercial world is still evolving and changing so much, even in the last year, um, but that's our current anticipated use. Mm -hmm. A lot of changes going on still. It is an ideal location for, um, to meet that sort of a need. Um, yes. And it's just because it's on a bus line, it's easy to get to, um, that kind of thing. Um, so the big, I guess the big thing is that um, you could possibly consider enlarging the commercial space um, if you did have an identified tenant, um, or at any rate, you can take a look at that to make sure it's actually viable space. Yes, we, we were wanting actually smaller space to begin with because of the changing nature of commercial real estate. Um, but also we, were, we took the input from the planning department to increase it because of the frontage and to keep it pedestrian and and so we've done that so i think it's a it's a it's a difficult topic there's, there's something to balance because what we don't want to do is create space that is vacant and if you look around the city there's a lot of commercial space that is vacant so it has to be functional uh, that's going to be a challenge but that's a challenge for every commercial space right now thank you Um, so, I also like this project. It's beautiful. Um, the one thing, there's a few things that I have um, questions about. One is um, because of the underground parking, um, ventilation, was there a study done around fumes, especially because there's residences right above the parking garage? I, I didn't, it was hard to see that in the plans. That's I something I would be concerned start about. Start by addressing that. So. Um, and pass it off to the architect. So I'm not aware of any particular study that was Good done. Good evening but to the commission. I'm Jan Hockhauser. I've been working okay. on this for a long I'll time. <laughs> and uh, I haven't seen Samantha in a long time. Finish his thought and then you can oh, I'm back. sorry. That's was, okay. You were just both talking. I was just going to mention that, um, of course, uh, all building code requirements will have to be um, uh, complied with throughout the course of the project. So I think that that's where I'll start the conversation. Then I'll happily pass it over to Jeff. Okay. I, I just wanted to say that typically a garage like this, subterranean garage, will require um, code ventilation shafts that exhaust well above any residential impacts. You can't go laterally to property lines, so that will be addressed. Um, how many parking spots are in this? That's the other question I had. Great question. It Actually, the, the project has evolved, um, and again, I can defer to Jan here, but uh, as shown in the plans, um, there's a total of uh, 39 parking spaces, but that included um, a mechanical parking lift, which uh, has been possibly, potentially, very likely elected to be um, removed due to cost uh, because one of the um, more recent state bills, uh, Assembly Bill 2097, actually exempts the project from provision of any parking at all. Uh, due to its proximity to a major transit stop, but um, because the, the project's been under um, preparation for a number of years prior to the passage of AB 2097, which I don't think anybody anticipated, the 29 parking spaces will continue to be provided. 29. Yeah. Can I speak to that? Yes, I think we want to, um, you know, respect neighborhoods' wishes as well in this, and I think parking will have a certain value as well so although it's voluntary um, and currently it's at 39 we anticipate it being between 29 and 39 because it would be voluntary it's not required so we are um, applying the AB 2097 to this project but we're not going to get rid of the parking we're going to have parking I think it has value 
Um, and part of the reason is it's costly for having those lifts. So if we're not required, we probably won't do it. But I think we want to have the option of, of putting them there if, the, if it makes financial sense to the construction of it. And I think there is always need for more parking in some ways. Um, but also, it is so close to public transport. It's walking distance. That's why we've got the SRO development there. So, you know, we've had to try and accommodate lots of people's wishes here. Some commercial properties locally wanted parking. Some people don't want parking. So I think where we've landed is actually helpful that we are providing a range of parking. Um, so the range, we want to be clear that we want between 29 and 39 spaces because they're, they're, they're voluntary. I do have one more question. Um, from my history, I've, I uh, know some people that have worked in the, the adjacent building, the old hospital, the, I guess we're calling, I call it the Ristorani Italiano building, but yeah, um, yeah exactly. But I, didn't, I just found out it was a hospital. Um, um, but they were, they were talking about, some, I'd, I'd, this was a couple years ago that I'd heard that there was an issue with groundwater contamination on that, on that parcel. Um, they were looking at possibly doing some sort of renovation, especially in the buildings that are behind that building, the smaller buildings. Um, was there uh, like a, any, did we, is, is, first of all, is that true? Um, and then if it is, did, was there some sort of a pollution study done um, just to check and make sure? Because I, I did see that there is going to be water, groundwater, possibly during Right. So, great question, Commissioner Maxwell. So, I'm not familiar with the particulars of the adjacent property, but um, I can uh, state, you know, for this particular property, um, an environmental site assessment was not required because the property is actually not listed on any of the um, documented lists of potential or potentially contaminated sites, and so it was not it was a, not identified as a requirement for this particular site. I once dated a woman who was born in that hospital. Her name is on the wall, so just for local trivia purposes. Um. Yeah, um, I had a quick question just about the parcel consolidation, and maybe I maybe I didn't hear you right. Um, but I thought you heard, I heard you say with the parcel consolidation, we're still keeping the zoning on the parcels that are being consolidated, and that's just a totally foreign concept to me. Um, could you just talk about that for a minute? Um, Certainly. Yeah, that's, this is a very unique project in a lot of ways. Um, and one of the um, challenges, as I understand, uh, with the development of this, this site, obviously it's, you know, three different general plan designations, two different zoning designations, um, was that um, I guess to uh, fully merge the properties would present some challenges with compliance with building code, uh, particularly because, um, and I'll maybe defer to the architect more for that, uh, but, but again, it is pretty unique, um, and this was uh, reviewed by staff in consultation with the city attorney you know, several years ago when the project first came to fore, and um, this particular approach was, um, was um, acceptable to the city attorney's office. Um, and the idea would be that the, the project site would be merged, meaning all three parcels would be um, combined. Uh, but the actual GP designations and the zoning designations would remain for those respective parts of the site. And so that would allow for um, things like, you know, building A uh, to, or building B to, to span existing property lines, but because those property lines will be dissolved, essentially, it wouldn't present a challenge for, from a building code standpoint. Right, and um, thank you. Um, and moving into the future, say, um, you know, if, if the owner wanted to lot split or maybe do some kind of, uh, you know, raise some part of the project and then move into the, you know, move into a different direction, they would still be bound by the general plan and zoning regulations? That's correct, yeah. Okay, great. And then um, I had a quick question for, I believe, the developer. I wanted to talk to somebody about Tree 46. I don't know who that is, but... I know that that's in the Arborist report, but I was just curious about uh, 
what the plans are because as I, as I interpreted the plans, it seems like there is a very large tree that is questionably uh, preservable and it's right next to the driveway, but out of the footprint of the higher floors. And I was just curious if somebody could speak to what the plan is with that. Cause you know, I think everybody up here, we don't want to <laughs> just cut down trees. We don't have to, but at the same time, the report made it sound like this tree was, you know, a heritage tree. Yes. But uh, also potentially very unhealthy. So I guess I'm just curious about what the plans are there. Yeah, I'll give you some feedback on that direction. So the project was conceived to kind of work around that tree. Um, but subsequent to the planning of it, the arborist kind of said it's a questionable tree. So we don't want to be, we don't know that we'll be able to save it. We're going to try. But to be saddled with a condition would be like kind of very tough. So our goal is to try. Um, the design kind of respects it. And it's a nice feature there. But I think we... That's kind of where we're at with it. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I wasn't really thinking of a condition. I, I guess I was just curious about what the plan was. So thank you. So uh, just so we're all clear, can you or go back to that landscape plan? Can you just point to it? It might take a minute to get the right slide. That's fine. Yeah, 246. Uh, I'm doing the same sort between three different sheets over here. So it's right next to the questionable triangular sliver there. Sorry, yes. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's yeah. One. I don't know that one's going to survive construction. I'm not an arborist. But it's also a very fine feature. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it would add a lot of beauty to the landscape. And if, I mean, I think you answered that question. So, yeah, thank you. I have a somewhat, but not, it's not related to trees, but I wanted some clarification on and make sure I understood probably because of something Commissioner Gordon said. Um, as I understood it, um, you're intending to um, establish, after you combine the lots, three separate APNs um, on that lot um, and that are potentially uh, could be sold off and operated by different parties? Or could you clarify your intention um, for the use of the building? Yeah, so, so in respect to the city's SRO ordinance, mm -hmm. um, you can't rent out individual SROs. Uh, it has to be one entity. So uh, the building A is essentially an SRO building. Mm -hmm. So that could be a separate, um, like a condominium entity, where an, another individual can operate the SRO component but getting back to the, the abandonment of the lots, they would all participate in the, in the podium and sharing the garage, the bike storage and all that, but that would be kind of like a homeowners association where one entity was the 23 unit SRO building. Right, as opposed to, because I, I actually don't think that SROs work well as home ownership units, and I hate to see them mapped. I think they're right. a nightmare to manage. And um, I, I feel like they're a problem for neighbors and so forth um so i just right so keeping that as one entity was the goal um so okay so you're intending to manage these as rental properties correct yeah all of them they're not mapped individually they're three they're three buildings mm -hmm. that, can, that could be potentially sold but as a whole building as a building okay, yes. i misread that, that that's yeah, what sorry, I, I was yeah yeah thank you um, <laughs> Also, to add to that, I'm not sure, because I think when we started this project, if I'm not mistaken, SROs had to be rentals. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe recently they, they said that they can become Worky. for sale. So. Yeah, I guess I thought the SROs were going to be rented, and then the larger units you were going to map. That, that. No, no, I, no. I created that in my own <laughs> okay. fantasy mind that you were doing that. <laughs> we'll discuss that. <laughs> it's not just you. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, Processing. I got you too. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the, on the conditions of approval on number 46, uh, dedication, a five foot wide strip along Soka Avenue frontage shall be dedicated to the city for purposes of future roadway improvement. Um, is that five feet, is that sidewalk and street? Is it street, no side? Like, what? what is the five feet pertain to? 
Was I'm sorry. Was that condition number fifty five? Uh, forty six. Oh, 46, Okay. Um. Yeah. I'm just uh. Just really quickly. Um. Tim, while, while you're looking, I could address it. So, in the process of working with staff, we actually had to retreat the building back to accommodate that five feet right and that public works just wanted that for the future like a possible right hand turn lane is that the idea? I don't well, think that's what they no. were thinking but well, I, I know there was discussion about parking a bike lane uh -huh. and that yeah, kind of stuff. definitely bike lane. We'll talk to transportation I remember in the corridor process there's very unsuccessful talk about <laughs> eventually widening the right away there yeah, that's to what accommodate different transportation modalities okay thanks did not fly it, but yeah I appreciate mm -hmm. that Okay. We got it coming. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Sorry. So, um, going back to the the separate, the consolidation of the parcels with all with different assessors parcels numbers, correct? And so, I guess I'm just kind of confused about that piece. Right. So the way it's presented, and I can defer to Jan here, but um, the way the the project plans are drawn is that. Uh, the proposal is for the existing lot to be consolidated, excuse me, existing par lots to be consolidated into a single parcel essentially, and then for three different condominium, airspace condominium um, areas to be uh, um, brought into effect. So basically, um, so that each one of the buildings would be its own condominium as that building itself. So. Basically, three different condos, one for each building, and then the remainder of it essentially common space. And so, um, for a total of four parcels. Um, and so, so the civil plans are um, do show the condominiums. It's not particularly clear the way they're shown. So, one of the conditions of approval does require that the uh, the tenant map that's you know finally recorded um, make it very clear as to what's um, the final map. <laughs> Yeah, right parcel map yes yeah, uh, the, the parcel map um, show um, that very clearly and the APNs are that's for tax purposes correct uh, so that part I'll defer to the applicant for the, so the as I understand it, it, it right there would be an APN just like a condominium would have an APN but it would, would be one homeowners association and one overall property okay that's kind of what I was thinking where it's like okay there's three different tax process is going on here, but it's all one contiguous lot. Correct. That, okay. I'm just trying to it's wrap like my head rights, around that part. Air rights condiment. That was the one, and I should have said this ahead of time, but that was the one part that I was, that I had trouble understanding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That, thank you. That was really helpful as, as Tim mentioned with the building department, because if you created these separate parcels and developed, then all of a sudden you've got a property line in the middle of your parking garage. Yeah, yeah. And how do you fire protect that? It became right. impossible. Right. So working with the city attorney and staff, we, we crafted this solution. Excellent. Thank you. Um, also, I just wanted to point out condition of approval number 45. So that would require CCNRs to be recorded on the property. So um, if those buildings were sold off separately, they would still be under this uh, homeowners association um, for access to all the common area spaces here. Right. Well, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Um, can we go to the parking lot, parking plan? I want to see where the um, accessible spaces are. I expect they're near the elevators down there. But I just wanted to ask uh, where those are going to be provided and if that's been thought through. Yeah. Um, Not like exactly, but they're in the garage down by the elevator <laughs> yeah. somewhere. Yeah, they're showing right there. Tim's highlighting them for you. and okay. They do have immediate access to the elevator there. Uh, okay, so we can't require you to do any parking, but is the two going to become one, or you know, like you, we just adjusted for your parking stack, right? Get all that, but you well, think so, be two so, in the final design, most likely. Yeah, but per building code, you know, and the limited number that we have, um, we meet meet the ADA requirements by you know those two spots there. One would be, need to be a van spot. Mm -hmm. And then, you can see the striped area yeah. between. 
Well, I'm just thinking about requiring EV parking on the same theory where we can't require you to pro provide any parking. But what's your intent? Is your intent to provide some EV parking? Oh, or yeah, yeah. We, we would that? fully meet all the requirements. It, it, you know, choice yeah, yeah. or not, once you provide it, you got to comply. You, you see what I'm struggling with? Like, if you require zero parking, you can't multiply it by 15% of the we, spots, we can't, right? We can't yeah. say, oh, you know, the, the zoning doesn't require it, so we're not providing ADA. Other requirements. Yeah. That, and also, people want parking. EV spots. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm getting to more of a discussion because there's one accessible part parking spot on the street in the front. We'll talk about that later, but that's where I'm headed with this comment, just so everyone's clear. Oh, I hate this question because it. I looked. Where does the trash go? It goes out the front. It sits on the sidewalk for a bit and then um, gets pushed out into the bike lane. and then. You know, in our discussions, if, if, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, if, if I ahead. may answer that. Maybe so you, can you put that up just and point to it? Uh, it's right there. You can see the okay. trash room, and, and the presumption is that there's no way that uh, trash collection is going to go on May Avenue sorry, into yeah. the garage. So it's on the SoCal surface, and you can pull out right to the, the uh, trash vehicle right there on the street. Okay. And it's, it's proximal and convenient to the commercial. Yeah and then the elevator for residents to use it as well. And there's really not like a great spot for that to happen. Right. Just because the site is complicated. So I don't remember, is there a condition about managing all that? Uh, my concern is like dumpsters sitting on the side right. for three days. I don't think anyone would do that, but that's my concern. Yeah, yeah we've, we've actually, um, planning staff has had pretty extensive conversations with public works staff about that precise topic. Okay. And the concern was raised about how it will be managed. So there is a condition of approval stating that the requirements of all departments have to be fulfilled um, prior to the permit public issue. And so, um, so for any sort of kind of lingering questions about management, um, the requirement does, or the condition of approval does require that the applicant continue to work with the public works department. Okay. And then while we're at it, yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> there's, there's, trash. I mean, that's well. There, the there's also the question as we're seeing these infill, you know, infill sites that are more densely developed. Um, another question is where does the Amazon truck stop? <laughs> right, <laughs> you, you got to ask. <laughs> yeah, uh, the idea being it's going to be that's going to be an issue. Yeah, it's stop in that lane. Because they're not going to want to pull into the garage. It is going to be an issue, um, and uh, I'm I, I'm not sure. We've talked about it with other projects before. Um, there's some sites that have been really worse than this one, um, but even as it is, um, you know that that location now it use it has um, has been problematic with the um, Veracruz and and that kind of thing. It's fairly wide, but so I've just wondered if that's been anticipated or if if the city is requiring um, that to be thought through. We don't have any objective standards about loading zones for these mixed use spaces that have kind of smaller commercial areas. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have them in our new objective standards. So that will happen at some okay. point. Um, we could um, think about having that be on May Avenue, although um, I don't know how, how, you, how much you can enforce you know, where they're going to stop. It seems like they just stop right in front of the buildings mostly. Yeah, and it's pretty steep. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So you guys want to walk around and look at samples for five minutes? Sorry, audience, this is not very exciting. But if anyone wants to come up and look, uh, we'll just do that as part of the meeting, including the public. Come on up.
All right, well, that was a little bit weird. I couldn't have the public up because the public hearing hasn't opened yet, so that's just procedural. And then when we get to the public hearing, we'll bring these boards out and Jan can walk you through the materials. Um, it seems silly, but these material boards are really important. And like we, especially in a world of objective standards, we need to be very clear, like that's exactly what we want because it's gonna change, it might change. And um, it's really nice to bring the boards. Thank you for doing that. Um, so I have one more question uh, for Jan and team. Um, on the elevation of building B, like on the inside, can you bring that up? So my, uh, my, what I'm getting to is operable windows. And I work in the energy code world. And this is technically a four-story building. And there are very strong, weird incentives in Title 24 now, which we do, that are going to kind of push you to not have operable windows, most likely, based on cost. Because you've been on these projects. How are we going to put all the vents and yada, yada? So this wouldn't apply to the SRO building, because it doesn't have any windows. The units are so tiny. There's just a door at either end. But I wanted to see that elevation, if we could, even if it takes a minute in the PDF plans. Uh, did I write that down? Yeah, sheet A, 4.3. This is very specific, but it's super important because we're in Santa Cruz and I like the breeze. I like opening my windows. Yeah, it was sheet A, 4.3. Mr. that's the section drawings? Yeah, A, 4.3? It, it, doesn't it show the elevation of that? Uh, no, I think I you're at the 3.3. Oh, okay. That could, be, that could be it. But it will make more sense when we can see yeah. it. You know. Yeah, it would be it would be three three. Okay. Oh yeah, there is no four three, huh? That's my typo. So so on on sheet A three two, there's an interior elevation of the uh, Paseo, the pedestrian street yeah, from what, Soquel. That's what I'm talking about. So three point two, and three point one. There. Right there, that works. So, commissioners, you see you got the patio doors and you got those windows off to the side. They're currently shown with a little operable side light. And I wonder if you'd be amenable to us just conditioning that those remain operable or if that would be a terrible idea. I, I'm just looking at, I'm making sure we're on yeah, the totally. same page. And, and we can take a minute to think about this. I'm not trying to put you on the so spot. So, you're talking about on 3 2, just a sec. that drawing on the top? No, the, the drawing bottom. on the bottom. So, so those are are and when I zoom in on the, the windows there, Tim, next to the balconies? To the right. You're almost there. That's okay. So so that drawing on the bottom mm -hmm. are the um, balconies from the apartment living spaces. Yes. And those are the, the access doors to those living sp outdoor living spaces. Those would be operable. Yeah, they would need to be operative. My concern is right next to that in the next bay, those bedrooms. Right. So there's an really draw out the fixed and then a there's a, a fixed and an operable vent. Uh -huh. And because of the fire code, 
you have to meet a minimum size operable vent dimension about bedroom exit. Got it. Okay, no condition needed. Fire code's going to require it. But we Thank did you. minimize the amount of yeah, vent just yeah. to meet that requirement. The bigger buildings particularly, we're doing, you know, you can't open the window apartments, and I just feel weird about that in Santa Cruz. So um, thanks for the extra time. I appreciate you looking at that. Okay, that's my last question. Don't go anywhere. Any other questions for staff? Oh, is it just for staff? Or no. applicant. Anybody? Oh, yeah. Yes. Questions rather than discussions. <laughs> I do. Excuse me. Um, can you go to A2.4? I'm curious about um, in the three bedroom that, um, right above there. There's a room. What what is what what is going on with that room? There, I think there's no windows and. Um, That's a little like office, like office, live work office but room. No no windows. Okay. No windows. Okay. Because you'd have a fire code issue right. on an exit passageway or an exit balcony. If you had a window, you'd have to fire protect it. Yeah. Um, and they're mm -hmm. in there in the in the one bedrooms as well, right? Those are supposed to be smaller office. Correct. Um, yeah. It's okay. like a little live work office space. Okay. Um, so, um, thanks for bringing the material board. It's really, or the material palette. Um, it's good to have those back. Um, I have a couple questions. One is the drawings do say lath and plaster, um, and they're noted in ground level. And I'm wondering if you if that's meant to be stucco or if you are actually thinking plaster because they're just different compounds. Sometimes people superimpose those words, but I'll get real official Portland cement plaster on metal lath, three coat, smooth finish. Okay, so I mean, so it is going to be plaster and not. Stuck. I mean, one oh. is softer than the other, so I'm just asking. Well, in terms of, of the finish, my understanding would be that you've got like a, um, a laced, rough textured finish, right. then you've got a fine sand finish, and then you've got a steel trowel, very fine yeah. finish. That's what we intend, a steel trowel finish. Okay. But specifically, my question is, because plaster and stucco are two different compounds and one is softer than the other. So normally in a commercial situation like this, we would see stucco because of its durability. That, that's what we intend. Okay. So I just, I want to be specific Cement about that. Cement stucco would be one way okay. we would refer yeah. to it. I, I just, because it, one will be much more durable and yeah. um, but plaster could be used just I don't think in this particular environment so I wanted to be clear because the drawings note lath and plaster specifically okay. yeah so. but I would I would go on record here for what you're thinking of the durable yeah. stucco cement Great. finish okay um, and then the final well I guess um, I guess that's it for really my questions that yeah thank You're you welcome to keep going that was a great question um, I just wanted to um, say that uh, that kind of thing we would want to include as a condition of approval, just so we're we're very clear if the plans are saying one thing and the applicant saying another. We want to make sure we have that. Okay, thank you. All right, if there aren't any more questions, uh, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. So before we start with questions and comments, let's take a little time and bring the material boards out here, and then Jan, you can kind of show people what's going on. Does that work for everybody? And is, am I allowed to do that? I think so. Good to check, you know. And then maybe it would be helpful to put one elevation at least up. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tim, can you put an elevation up just so that people can see where these things go? Yeah, I think we should leave it up. Yeah, and it is a, it's 
But I really felt like Ristorante Dollar was like right there the first time I went. And, it, and then I went out there and it, you know, it's there, but it's, yeah. it's a good distance away. Okay. So I'm glad that you brought all those things. Yeah. I haven't seen anything I see that you appreciate. Density comes with density because you don't have enough space to get everything out. Um, yeah, no, I don't think there's, there's only two of us. And then it's this one. I don't feel good about writing in these conditions. Do you do you have a subcommittee on the materials of this project? Think about it. All right, everyone, so ask one more question, and then I want to get back to the formal process. Go ahead and finish your thought. But, uh. All right, great. Thanks, everyone, for in, uh, participating in that. So now we're opening the public comment period. Uh, the way this works is we love your comments. Thank you, good, bad, or ugly. We want to hear from you. We appreciate you sitting through what can be long meetings. Uh, the process is if you can line up over here uh, near where Rafa is standing. And if you want to, just put your name on the, the clipboard there. It's not so we can track you. It's just so we can spell it right in the minutes if we need to. Um, we'll give everyone three minutes. I think that's plenty of time. 
there's not a huge crowd, but if people have already said what you said, you know, there's not much value in uh, repeating it. I just didn't know whether, whether now would be a good time as they're signing in to talk about some conditions, or would you prefer that later? Have that discussion after public comment Thank period. You. And uh, we'll make plenty of time for that. Yeah. Yes, and, and typically the applicant gets to speak first. Absolutely. And uh, would the applicant please come speak first? Do you want to present more? Thanks, Samantha. I forgot that. If you have anything you want to add, or um, yes, I know we've mentioned some of these points. I just want to make sure. Um, yeah, I think I want to just talk about the conditions. Actually, I think we've covered a lot already. Okay. Um, I wanted to to propose um, item forty three on the condition, conditions of approval, that first line it says, as may be amended. And I think with SB 330, we're not held to amendments to that code. And I would uh, propose that that be struck out. And the other item was item 49. And really an additional wording at the end um, because it's restricting us to not do any groundwork and what happens if we pull the permit you know uh, October the 31st uh, so we wanted to add add to the end there unless unless winter grading operations are approved by public works so unless winter grading operations are approved by public works addition there those are the only two items on the condition we wanted to speak to i do want to say thank you to the planning department they've been very supportive and especially tim i uh, want to thank him for all his hard work attention to detail and the staff reports very thorough we really appreciate all the time and effort to get it to this stage all right. thank you thanks all right, now it's time for the public to come ahead and uh, line up, sign up, and tell us what you think. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Rafa Sonnenfeld here on behalf of Santa Cruz EMB. Uh, we're in strong support of this project. Uh, this project meets a lot of uh, needs for the community from uh, smaller affordable SRO units uh, to larger family size units. Uh, it's a good looking project. We also appreciate that it will have unbundled parking so that folks who don't need a car who live on this uh, high quality transit corridor can uh, do so without having to pay extra for for a uh, parking space that they don't use so thanks very much look forward to, to seeing this get built thank you good evening my name is ryan bailey i live at 126 may which is the property, the residence um, on the property line. Um, I want to thank Tim and the developers for being with <laughs> us over the past year to make this a project, which is a favorable addition for the whole neighborhood. Um, my primary concerns with the project center on scale and traffic, and the Amazon truck um, comment actually really struck a chord because we already have um, delivery trucks on that dead end section of May who get stuck and can't turn around. That's funny. Um, and so with that increase of traffic entering and exiting May, um, it's already a very dangerous intersection exiting onto Soquel. Um, I do think there are some safety concerns there. Um, in some of the early plans in 2015, um, the proposal was actually to have parking accessed off of Soquel with a large turn-in, similar to like a bus turn-in. Um, so one, one of the requests I have is to consider the traffic um, into and out of May and potential alternatives. I, I know it may not be feasible. Um, the second concern I have is about the elevated residences in Building C. Um, which are on top of the entrance to the underground parking garage. 
Um, those really, by the plans, create a <coughs> looming structure that block all of the south sun to my house. Um, so it, I, I would request that you consider those two additional units out of the 43, um, how they contribute to the pro project and how they impact the surrounding neighbors. Um, in conclusion, um, I want to thank um, Tim and the developers again. Um, like to consider the traffic um, hazards as well as potentially the setback waiver that's requested for building C on my property line. Um, I would request that that's also considered and the impact that it has to my residents. Thank you. Could I ask you one more question before you go? Sure. How's street parking on that street? Is it just packed all the time? Do you guys have permits already? We, Do you want permits? We just got permits a month ago. Okay. Um, we knew this was coming, and so we worked with the city to Sweet. get that um, through, and we just got our permits a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I'm so glad you got everyone to agree. That's yeah, because it, it would have been okay, a nightmare, great. impossible. And then that, you have to pay like a yearly fee and get a new one. Right. I have one on my street, so I know. Yep. But uh, Okay. Um, thanks. That's really helpful. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. <coughs> um, I'm Elizabeth Lindsley, and I live on May Avenue right next to the creek. And um, the project has so many things going for it. There's no question about it. <laughs> Um, I just have to, my, with my couple concerns with this the street coming down onto May Avenue, in a sense we're inventing a new street. And I'm concerned, you know, as I was listening to it to, tonight, um, about turnaround on that street <laughs> to get back down. Um, we've seen a, all kinds of crazy things happen at the end otherwise. and. You know, I, I wonder about the traffic count, quite honestly, because people come down that street all the time not realizing it's a dead end, even though there's all the signage in the world there. So, I don't know. And then the, the unit above the roadway, because it's so sloped there, has to be higher than the house, net, you know, a regular house would be. So it doesn't really fit. <laughs> The, the neighborhood and the blocks of sun, et cetera. Um, I'm also very concerned about drainage um, off the property. I live at the bottom of the hill, <laughs> and the storm drain em enters it down there into the Branson Forty Creek. Um, currently, um, as water comes down Soquel Avenue, it takes a right-hand turn down May Avenue. So we're getting Soquel and May Avenue water going down our street. It often collects at the base of the street um, in a heavy storm. Um, the Best Western, which is immediately across the street, um, has um, pumped its garage, and I'm glad to hear that they may not be doing the garage, the lower level of the garage, I guess. Um, because I imagine it will need to be pumped or something's gonna have to happen with some water coming through there. And um, right now it's, you know, Best Western drains onto May Avenue. So that, that's the other side of the street <laughs> getting an impact too. So it's coming down, so Kel, it's coming down from the new development. Right now the trees kind of catch some of that. That, that, may, that will still be there available with the new trees I imagine, but um, anyway, those are my concerns. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question. I didn't have time to walk down there. Yeah. If I walk down May mm -hmm. and I hit that dead end, you can like kind of turn right and go on a paved path along the culvert. Yeah, that's the that's on, the like, kind of uh, path. Is that the right? na nature path or the cr yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's my house right there. Where's the next place you can cross the culvert? It's all the way up by Ocean. Oh, Street you have to go up to Water. Water Street. Okay. Yeah. That's or go back out onto. Ocean, yeah. yeah. I went to Galt as a kid. We used to ride our bikes through there. So I'm yeah. Like, Was that where it went? There's a, there's a <laughs> tremendous amount of foot traffic and bike traffic yeah. on that. Through that area. Cut off, yeah. Okay. It's Thank really, you. it's a great feature.
Good evening. Um, could you keep, could you pull up that photo looking down May towards the uh, creek? Um, at, so my name is Eric, you can back up please. Um, but um, so my name is Eric Rodberg. I own 115 May Avenue. I've owned it since 1994. Um, you asked the question about is the parking jammed up? No, it's not. And this was taken before the permit went in, the permit parking went in. And um, first of all, I, I support the project. I think it's great. Um, I do have an issue with the permit parking. First of all, the code under which the permit parking, the city can create permit parking. It's uh, municipal code 10.41.040. And uh, public works did it illegally. There is no provision to do it anticipatorily, uh, prospectively, right? And the requirement is requests for permanent parking shall generally reflect on-street parking occupancies of 75% or more when out-of-area parking demand is highest. And we never have full parking. So maybe after this project is completed, we would. But in, you know, you, they did it illegally. But the most pernicious thing is, it's not like the West Side program where after six, you, you know, it's open parking or in the weekends it's open parking. On this implementation, there's no parking in le after 6 p.m., 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. unless you have a permit. And what that effectively does is it <clears throat> creates a gated community after 6 p.m. It's a usurpation of the neighborhood of public property for the private use, and I really object to that. Um, and it also has a huge impact on my house because my house is probably the oldest one on the street. It's a six-bedroom house, legit six-bedroom house. I don't have a driveway. It's a very old house. If I put in a driveway, I'd only get one off-street spot, so it'd be a net wash because of the curb cut. Um, so the city did this illegally. <laughs> They're not supposed to do it under the code. They were unaware. I talked to, I talked to Public Works staff. They said, oh, no, a neighborhood could do it for, they don't have to have a reason as long as they vote for it. And they interpreted that 75%. They say, they're, it's not in the code, but their implementation of it is three quarters of the neighbors have to vote for it. And so they're mixing up the 75%. And I talked to Nate Goodman. I talked to Matt Starkey. And so, um, and as you noted, the project, um, they're providing parking and they don't have to. So while I appreciate, um, you know, neighborhood concerns, and it might in fact be an issue, mm -hmm. that's for the future. So I'd really like to see that addressed in this whole thing. I've spoken before Transportation Public Works, spoken at, or at City Council, and it's really not okay for staff to just ignore the municipal code. So uh, if, if you are okay with it, can I ask you two clarifying sure. questions? I, I live on the west side, so I don't know. Can you get guest permits in this zone? Because that's so how we do it. Like you, you, get you, for, you, you know, can get you guest permits, right? But, but right, but so what if you have a take? Oh, you have a takeout, or you have, you know, my house. It's a six-bedroom house. And the other thing staff did is after I raised these questions. Well, I hear you. I hear you. I don't no, to hang on. One out. Your time. I just asked a question. You answered. So they weren't going to give me guest permits because I have a six-bedroom house. So for my house, it wasn't going to work. And then they tried to exact retribution on my tenants when I raised these issues. So venues to address those concerns. This is not it. But thank you for your me? time. There's venues to address those concerns. Well, I've been gone. I've gone through all the venues, and and you know this is where you have their project approval. So I think this is one of the venues. Okay. I've you know. We hear you. All right, any other public comment? Going once, going twice, but that will close the public hearing and bring it back uh, to the commission for some more comments, discussion, and hopefully a motion at some point. Um, I am adding to <laughs> the conditions of approval. Um, and I think they're pretty simple. 
So, but they just do need to be covered because that's our job here. So, can somebody type them on screen. Yeah. He's, um, there, thank you. So, um, again, I appreciate you bringing materials in. We haven't seen them, and so I usually am like <laughs> harping away at that. Um, I think <laughs> one thing that does need to be addressed um, early on is how the um, well the Equitone, which is an amazing product, and so I'm glad to see that. And um, But a little bit more information about the transition and articulation of how that material is being applied, because right now it just sort of s states it as this general material that's going on large spans. And so um, I'm recommending that, that that's part of the condition of approval. Um, I don't know if I, am I gonna read what, are, are you going to, yeah, um, so um, during building permit phase, applicants shall provide elevations that depict actual material texture, seams, and transitions that's consistent with the actual installation. Um, organize an intentional material application needs to respond to the overall form of the building, such as transitions of joints or si of similar and dissimilar materials. So um, I know that won't be hard, but I just feel like that's my job so um and then we're gonna add in specifically that um that it stucco <laughs> so that would be great and then just it's not a condition of use but i would say that just in our area and durability um and the amount of people that are going to be moving around that property that maybe four coats with a integrated fiberglass in your stucco might really be useful too. So, but um, I won't make that a condition. That's just a, a thought. So thank you. And um, although it's not for sale and I'm kind of heartbroken about that, um, I do really appreciate the level of um, strategy that went into <laughs> the land use of this. So thank you. Right, thank you. I so agree with that. Modern buildings, great materials. Hit the corner, hit the edge. You're like, Sunnyvale, what are you doing? You know what I'm talking about. So that's really important to describe that to us. We've seen it downtown. Go downtown. You know what I'm talking about. Not your building, but uh, another architect's building. Uh, who's next? I can go. Um, so I guess definitely the thing that is the biggest issue is tra the traffic and I mean it's being brought up multiple times by multiple people in different ways May Avenue is one it's a dead-end street I've actually been on it before had friends that maybe lived I don't know in a person who spoke earlier's house I think it was pretty big um, but the other issue that I want to bring up is not just the traffic on May Avenue but also the traffic on SoCal Avenue because that is the only and and specifically bike traffic because if we're trying to get out of people using cars, we need to um, pr you know, promote safe biking. And that section of SoCal is the only section that doesn't have a bike lane. And it's very dangerous to drive, to go from Midtown to downtown, as that's one of the major corridors for biking. And there's a, you have a bike lane in front of Whole Foods, and you have a bike lane on the other side of Ocean. So, um, I'm one. I know. The, uh, not to cut you off, I prepped him to like give us a bike ride yeah, down there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. This is a and I, this uh, exact comment. So exactly. Can, okay. Mm -hmm. But so we're gonna take a little ride. I'm heading home from work on my electric cargo bike, and I know that that's just because I drive this route that I'm so sensitive. Same. To. Same here. But this is the most terrifying part of riding right, my right bike here. back to the west side. You come out of the bike lane and into see that is a shared traffic lane because it's real narrow up there by shoppers, right? And then you hit that first, uh, keep going, Tim, just straight down. Yeah, so now I'm sharing with cars. You're going downhill getting faster and faster. They're mm -hmm. pissed. They're all jockeying around. But it's so narrow there, you have to share that lane, I think, traffic engineers to confirm. Keep going. So now we're headed down the hill, like picking up speed. All good. Yep. You know, you, now you're over by the curb, and then that parking happens. And I don't think we can get rid of all that parking, though we should right away. I think, we, yeah, exactly. And keep going, keep going. <laughs> and uh, don't worry, we're not going to make you guys pay mm -hmm. for all this. I just wanted to describe it. Right and there's there, the Amazon truck. Spot. You see that accessible spot? That spot, like 
in part wrecked the corridor process because all the neighbors were like, you're going to take out that accessible spot. Mm -hmm. And it was extremely politically embarrassing to be the guy that wanted to take out the accessible spot. But mm -hmm. if somebody parks there, like we need to get rid of that spot. We're providing accessible, even better than that access down by in the parking garage. It's a little weird. You got to go around and in. And again, I'm not an expert, but my question is, can we nuke that accessible spot right Right, now? so that was yes, going to be my question. Some stuff, yeah. yeah, that would be my question is, within reason, I'm not an expert at bike traffic, and I don't know all the what we're allowed to ask for, but um, if we could somehow include, you know, to articulate this a lot better than it is right now, because I... I I bike, I, I don't bike probably as much as I should, but I, as a con someone who does construction, am I driving my truck down that road? And, you know, I wanted to, I'm a very conscious driver and wanting to share the road with bikes, but it, this is a very challenging section. And I feel like since we're talking about it, now is a great time to like really address this. So that's my main thing. And, and maybe we can have more discussion about how we can facilitate that. And, and this would, I mean, this was going to help the project. It'll help, you know, the whole articulation around the building. And yeah, yeah. so that's my main concern. And I mean, we can, the other concern that I have is what was brought up by the neighbor, you know, of, you know, if I was living in the, the building C, I don't know, it'd be kind of interesting. You're like the drawbridge guy, you know, like, you, like you're going to hear people coming in and out. Um, <laughs> And I don't know, I mean, I know I'm obviously the one here, I probably was like, I don't want to get rid of units. And, but, you know, I don't know how that, com you guys have already been talking about how you can make it, you know, more comfortable for the neighbor. He seems like he's a really reasonable person. So um, that's the other concern. And, you know, is like, is that build, I mean, I know we don't want to get rid of units, but is that building really necessary? And if that building is maybe not necessary, and uh, maybe that's where the trash goes, maybe that's where the, we have a van space for a Amazon van to turn around. I don't know. So, you know, I just want to point that out as a possible, you know, there might, I know you guys have worked this through way more than I have. So, yep. Please. Oh, yeah, let me recognize that. Up okay, come on so, up. so we did have a lot of interface. Um, subsequent to the neighborhood meeting, we worked directly with that neighbor, and we articulated that building. It's, it, it, if you look at the elevations from his side, it's very tailored to the slope, and it's completely consistent with a residential neighborhood. His, his particular structure, uh, we work with his views and windows to cut openings in the drive-through so he could see through it. And then we wanted to point out the shadow studies that were carefully prepared, both as they are now and proposed, don't really perpetrate any new shadows. He's already like an average of 14 feet from the property line. So those structures are 20 foot apart. And I think if you go to the A3 series, the um, earlier A3s, you can see the side elevation there. Yeah, there you go. I, if, if you scroll, um, that's the opposite side. If you go up one sheet there, right there on the upper left, uh, you can see the slope of the grade for the driveway at the bottom of the elevation and how the roof um, plane mirrors that. So it, it's actually kind of less than two stories there. We, we said it's completely consistent with the scale and massing of, of that neighborhood. Um, the, the profuse existing trees create all the shadows. We're not creating new shadows. And if you notice, we, we incorporated a great sensitivity uh, to that elevation in terms of minimizing openings and privacy issues. And then uh, finally, I, I have to put in a plea for the idea that every unit is, is critical uh, for the solvency of, of a project like this, to, to deliver quality and deliver affordability uh, you, you're cutting off toes when you, you remove units. Thank you. Yeah, that's it for me until we can talk about more about this. All right. Well, if you don't mind, let me just jump on that bike stuff really quick. 
So, you know, I, I'm not even sure we could require this project to do like site improvements in the right of way. That's one question. I'm looking for a voluntary solution that doesn't cost too much and you guys are happy to fund with the bike lane. So what I know is every once in a while the streets are paved, you know, what is it, 10 years or 20 years, you get that repave project. I don't want these guys to have to pay for that. That's expensive, who knows when it's gonna happen. What I'm thinking about is that green paint on top is super, I'm sure, super inexpensive. So I wonder if we could work out some sort of voluntary, you know, like when the next repave happens, these guys have put, you know, whatever seems appropriate and a fair share kind of thing to make a tiny little incremental improvement there that would help. What do you think, like, like administratively? And I wish I thought of yeah, this yesterday and talked to you about it. Yeah, I think I would be um, hesitant to include that as a condition without Public Works weighing in on it. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, sometimes have requirements about the width and how much space they have to put stuff in there, and yeah. they might have stuff already planned. Um, for that roadway, the best stop or but but I think yeah. we could definitely put it in as um, you know uh, a requirement with uh, input from Public Works, so that they would have the ultimate say, mm -hmm. but um, maybe not require it specifically based on this project. Okay, yeah, I'm just well, weighing that. Like, I don't want to put this huge cost, and I want to do something, but I don't want to like it. Like, it's like how much is lighted crosswalk? I don't know. That feels kind of expensive to me. I think the one around a couple blocks was upward of two hundred thousand dollars, if I remember right, which is a lot of money. It's cool. It's great. Yeah. I wonder is there a way in which we could? I mean, the idea is that we're at a moment where we could possibly, not necessarily try and put it on the developers' you know shoulders to do this, but if there's a way in which we can at least urge the the process happening in, in, in a way where we're not necessarily making a, a hard condition of approval, yeah. but also putting something in where we can be like, hey, with, with working with Public Works, mm -hmm. is there a way in which we can facilitate that actually happening yeah. versus it being, oh, it will happen down the road? I think we could craft some condition that is, you know, relies on Public Works approving such an improvement. Um, these folks are also subject to a TIF payment, I believe, and oh, so, you right. know, TIF yeah. is also you funding. With the retail, yeah. Right, with improvements like that. I really, like, I can see Chris Schneider back there glaring at me right now, so I, <laughs> the former Public Works Director, so um, I wish they were here too. So I don't know, I just typed, like, staff will work with the applicant and other city departments to remove the accessible parking space and, and have the applicant voluntarily contribute to the striping or something like that? I'm just throwing something yeah, no, out. That, that works. And then when the angry emails come on the accessible parking space, you can forward them to me, that's fine, <laughs> I know. But we need to get serious about our transportation here. Just that one section. Oh, it's the speed, I think. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, that sound I, terrible, I, right? I'd like to go on the record after discussing it with my colleagues. We, we would be delighted, subject to approval by Public Works and their accepting the solution to contribute the green bike uh, path that you suggested. Yeah. I'm familiar with those, they're great. Yeah. Yeah. I like them too. Yeah. And I would, I, you can invite me to that meeting if it helps too. Because yeah. public's front, a good problem. Of yeah, not all the way out, so oh, Kel. Okay. Like not all the way up to the light, not right. all the way the water <laughs> Thanks for that yeah. clarification. <laughs> but the green paint really helps, I mean, for me at it least. Does. I feel like, at least we get run over, you know, at least on green paint. <laughs> okay, other Comments back to Mike or Julie, did you want to follow no, on? No, I, this is just a little one about these you know, little tweaks with transportation. And I know that a lot of times, you know, um, there's a lot of factors that aren't obvious. Yeah. Those of us who aren't transportation planners about how far are we from the corner and from the light and, yep, 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 you know, yep. from the one behind us. And so that that was my only comment on that. Mm -hmm. you never but I, I, think you're, you I think your language was soft and mm -hmm. raised the concern. And, and I, I trust you all to work this out, too, so. Can we make a motion? All right, Mike. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to make a couple comments. Um, I really like this project. I used to live at the uh, Soquel Avenue apartments, which are pretty much right across the street. And uh, what a great location. This place, uh, it's, you know, transportation-wise, you're front and center on Soquel and Ocean there. You can go pretty much anywhere in the city. 
Um, you know, it's got great amenities. It is fairly, you know, travel friendly in, in a lot of ways. Although, um, you know, if you guys wanted to green stripe all the way up Soquel up to Branson 40, you could, you know, nobody would stop you. Um, but I, I really like this project. I think uh, this is a good, um, not exactly our missing middle that we're looking for, but pretty close. Um, and I think especially once we start getting a little bit more dense development in the downtown sector, these types of projects in locations like this are going to become, I think, more and more common and more and more appreciated as we start filtering out towards uh, neighborhoods and, and things like this. So I think there's a lot um, going for this project. You know, the inclusionary rate is a little bit higher than some of the projects we've seen. There's a little bit more affordable housing just from a pure percentage perspective, loving that. Um, you know, it's got good transit nearby, it's infill, the amenities are great. So um, I think this is a pretty good example of, of um, projects I would like to see continuing into the future. So I wanted to thank you guys for uh, all your hard work and staff's hard work on making this happen. And, um, you know, no project is going to be perfect. And uh, this one isn't, but it's, uh, it's pretty close. It's just like the uh, paint color I just put on my house. You know, it's, it's not perfect, <laughs> but it's pretty close and we're going to live with it, and it's going to be great. <laughs> All right? Thank you. <laughs> OK, thank you. Um, so first of all, I'd like to thank the team uh, for a really thoughtful project and for um, working closely with neighbors. That's just really important. Um, and it, there's just nothing better than a hearing like this where we hear neighbors um, telling us positive things. And I know that some of the concerns that are hanging out there about stormwater and that kind of thing, I'm trusting Public Works to be addressing those. Um, I do have a comment about, you know, an SB 330 project like this, which without which we wouldn't be seeing this project. I'm sure we wouldn't be having this hearing anyway. Um, but at the same time, um, and that's the site needs redevelopment. There's no question about it. Um, but we are losing something. And um, I do think it's really important um, as these projects come forward that um, as a community that we really thoughtfully consider what we are losing. Um, and, you know, as I've mentioned, and, you know, perhaps you can tell, I had a personal connection with that doctor's office. He really saved my mother's vision in an emergency. And, um, you know, just such an incredibly kind doctor and, um, and who isn't going to be practicing for a long time, I understand that. But the service that he provides um, is hard to find and um, it's really important. And um, so I just really thank you for your um, past efforts and, um, th and would also encourage you to make really genuine efforts to um, figure out how to use that space if not for an ophthalmology um, who does a lot of emergency work, um, uh, to meet one of our really important community um, commercial needs. Um, and, um, and I thank you for that. And um, I also really want to thank staff. I know you've worked really hard on this and um, are, you know, are always so responsive. Um, so congratulations on a really great project. Are we entertaining motions? Let me just say one more thing. Um, yeah, I just also want to say thanks to everybody. I know how long this site has been proposed, and I think I worked on it in architecture school, but it was so long ago, I, uh, I could, don't have to disclose it, you know, but I remember, like, putting parking spots on there. Um, so thank you for improving that very difficult site. Um, I feel Julie on the trade-offs. Like, I went yeah. to that eye doctor a lot. It totally got me when they said, like, I'm the only one who takes this certain kind of insurance. Like, in this, I'm like, oh, I, I have that problem. So um, that's the cost, but we have to do it. And I, I trust that, that it'll be handled as gently as possible. Sounds like it already has been. Um, I totally appreciate the interaction you all have had before this meeting. So thank you for putting in that work and uh, coming. You know, it's not going to work for everybody. There's going to be a big building there, but uh, I really appreciate that. I kind of don't like saddling developments with paying for parking permits because the city's process, as has been talked about, and I know well, is like a little bit funky and weird. Is that a nice way to put it? But I wanted to ask if the applicant would consider paying for permit parking on May, you know, forever as part of this project. I don't think so. 
uh, it's only like that one little short street. You know, it's pretty close to your next. Clarify system. the question again, please. Um, when you're a resident, you get permit parking, and these guys did the hard work of getting whatever percentage of the residents to agree to it, which has been contested. But um, there's like a yearly fee from the city to replenish that parking spot, like to get your permit for the next year. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's... My concern would be people not parking in your garage and parking in front of everyone's houses on May. Am I, what am I missing? Talk to me. So they have permit parking already, but it's costing everyone money yearly. Thanks, so, Matt. Are, are you well, asking... That's another good question. I was thinking... Um, um, no, no, that, that's a good point. We've had other projects where we've had said the project, the one up um, mm -hmm. you know, by Brands 40, where we can conditioned or said the residents of this project can't bark on the side street. And the developer is going to help the neighbors subsidize their parking permits to help protect the neighborhood. But again, I'm throwing this out just as yeah. a thought because it's got, you know, these. You know, mm -hmm. can I raise a, a yeah, point yeah, yeah, on this? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm really dead set against this okay. notion. Okay. I feel oh, like yeah. it's shopping yeah. for trouble and where there isn't one. And um, I don't think we're, we're not solving a problem that anybody's raised. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. That's just my opinion. Yeah, yeah no, that's good. I'll withdraw it. I, 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 I love your sensitivity. Do it and I just, yeah, uh, it's, and yeah. all the solutions. That's good, it's a good intention. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It is a good intention. Okay. okay. Um, I'll make my standard comment. This project would have been so much better if we'd had the corridor plan. It's still pretty good, but man, I missed that thing. I thought that was good. Just a political comment, sorry. Um, all right, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to punish you for bringing the materials board. I don't want any tropical hardwoods in this project, and that's including that little yeah. square. I think I know you will find less expensive, better, longer lasting project. The thing is, this is like teak, which comes from the rainforest. And there's all these, excuse my French, bullshit where they certify the teak and say it's special and it's all bull. So I just don't like to do tropical hardwood because we need to preserve our rainforest. Okay, good. You know all the products, the recycled one, the compressed bamboo, thermal roy. So the condition would be no tropical hardwoods, even certified tropical hardwoods shall be used on this project unless specifically approved by the planning director, just in case you can go talk to Lee about how expensive it is. Or should that go to somebody else? No, that's fine. Okay. I like that. Then you have an out, like, just in case. Um, I had no objection to the two conditions proposed by the applicant, personally. I thought those were fine and non-controversial, so maybe we could just add those on to a motion. Um, yeah, that's great. I've got, that's all the comments that I have. So this is great, love this project. I'm, I'm ready to go with the motion. And there's some other stuff we can talk about on the next project. Chair Kennedy, mm -hmm. I have one clarification. So on um, condition number 68, um, with that first sentence there, is there something that you're looking for um, or are you just wanting them to provide details? So Tim Marie, should we just have them do a mock-up? I'm sorry, no, I well, I that. added that in before there was a material board, okay. so there's that. But I think it is important that we do see elevations maybe from a – I mean, we need building details, obviously, but then there's the design component. Like, what is the repetition of this material? Because – they're not going to apply it in four by eight sheets, probably, right? <laughs> so, though they may do two by two, or you may be doing twenty-four by forty-eight, or whatever their whatever their rhythm is for the equitone, or whatever you decide. And so, I think being able to see it in an elevation versus just a detail is important from a design perspective, so that you know what they're doing what the end game is. And right now it just shows us one small material. Is that? Um, I think my concern is oh. that um, we, we're not gonna be able to make any design 
um, we're not going to have any discretionary input when the building permit plans come in. So if you're thinking that you want that to be a certain way, then it would be better to just specify that in the condition. This is what we struggled with, which yeah. is that we've been on the other side. And so it's, I don't, I don't want to put my design decision on what that's going to be, but the goal is that we require that there's some intentionality to this. So I don't really know how we can um, hit some middle ground where, you know, I mean, we tried to put in our language in there, obviously, that says organized and intentional material applications or response, but that's, I understand that's somewhat subjective. So, I mean, I'm open to ideas, but the fact is, is there's design detailing that needs to happen on this, and rightfully so, it hasn't gone to that degree at this moment. So can we maybe ask the applicant what you would be willing to commit to? Let me recognize that. So he's dying to help us. I think we're speaking the same language, and, and, and what I would suggest is that you ask that the construction documents uh, include the information on the elevations that accurately reflect what was presented to the commission so that it's not lost uh, that the that the um, construction drawings specifically indicate uh, the nature, the size, uh, and the application of materials so that it's consistent with what was approved by the planning commission. Well, this is, but this is our issue, is that what you've provided us is just one smooth wall that has an arrow stating cement fiber board and it doesn't have any kind of it doesn't address like how this the material comes together end to end or like any transition <coughs> like there's not a I mean at least maybe you can educate me like but I don't think an entire wall can be covered with that material in those lengths and so there well, is so, going to so be so if I if I understand correctly the, the elevations that are part of the submittal package represent a patterning and a cutting of the equitone sheets uh, to deliver a specific uh, pattern and texture to that material, and that which you'd like to, sh if I understand you correctly, you'd like to make sure that's what you get. Are, I mean, can we pull up those specific drawings? Because maybe um, we missed them. But I didn't well, see those in the elevations. So I, I think like if you can see from that far away, but you can see the equitone pattern here. Right, so that isn't, that's not the elevation I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> um, I did see that one. Um, but if we go to, uh, yeah, it, I guess maybe sheet A2, can maybe go up a little. So it, the elevations would be on the A3 sheets. Maybe even the one on the left there. The maybe the one on the left at the very top, where it says um, Yeah, I mean like that one right there, but that's probably not the best mm. illustration. But there is the equiton <laughs> elevation, but then there's all these other elevations that state cement fiber panels, but they don't have a patterning to them. And so it was unclear to me if that same equitone patterning was being carried out throughout. Yeah, I think yeah. It, it is. And I and I so I think if, if you go to zoom out and go to um, another elevation, you can see that patterning. It should show up there, and it doesn't. But if you scroll down, <coughs> excuse me, um, keep going, Tim. But, but that's another example. These elevations right here are other examples where the, that articulation or intention is not in there. And so it was, well, those ones are all obviously yeah, that, the the, the, um, the, the right best. Right here, this is one right here, fiber cement panels right here on this elevation, but it doesn't have a, it just states. And so. I <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. We have to look at this place, you know, for years. So. And 
all I'm suggesting is that we have some understanding of <coughs> what the intention is in terms of that articulation because it's unclear based on the elevation. So, right, yeah. and 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 so that material, the equitone, comes in like four by eight or four by ten <coughs> sheets, and often it's applied in in kind of a massive sheet like that, and then many times it's cut and stripped to create patterning. Um, the applications are usually on some kind of batten, so it's floating a little bit off the wall. Um, the seams are kind of like just a quarter inch butt joint with a, with a seam like that, but at around corners, there's a technique to do it properly. Um, I know, <laughs> all of this, you're this familiar is why with I'm it. asking, because I'm it's not clear. Find, is there like a metal piece? Or just yeah, it's, you can do it either way. Yeah, it's, what, like, like, let me see if I got your concern. It's really different to have like four by eight sheets of hardy plank just plastered on a wall, and then you come with your paint and you paint like different rectangles over it. That's the ugliest thing. I've, and I've seen this. It's terrible. Yeah. We're not doing that. Right. We're not even proposing that. And you're asking for a little more information of kind of like how those sheets lay out. Are they going to be like a brick pattern or, you know, all those yeah. other yeah. cool things you see? And then also, I don't know if you're saying it or if I'm adding it, like we need more detail in the construction documents about those joints and, you know, and in my experience, those come with the construction documents because you're worried about waterproofing all that and you want to be very specific about yes. these pieces. And, and there's yeah. difference between showing a waterproofing detail and showing the entire articulation of the exterior of the building. Yes. And uh, what I'm asking for, because I'm, I it. know that those will be included, is that at some point, as part of the conditions of approval, that the planning department understands what the articulation is of these larger Got it. facades that are not addressed, that's all. Well, if this helps, then then maybe I see it as a simple way to say it, that the, the construction documents specifically indicate the applications and the joinery of all materials employed in the project. In the, the layout. Because yeah. yeah. very often, yeah. if you if the architect doesn't take the time to carefully produce a document that describes th th these patterns and the applications, a contractor's just going to blow this by This is it exactly why. I mean, team. I should have just cut to yeah, the chase. We're, we're we don't want to be page. making this decision on site. And and so I would like for everybody to know okay. that what the intention is and, and what that seeming pattern is and how it relates to the building. But I don't want to say to you, this is the pattern that needs to happen because you might have a better idea than me. And so I need, I understand we need to be specific. And so if that's specific yeah. enough, do say you that feel again, like that's specific enough? Again. That you can, you can add your own condition. Go ahead, say it again. So that the, the construction drawings should specifically indicate the patterning and the application of all the materials involved in the design. Sound good? <laughs> okay. <laughs> indicate the patterning so and the design. So the construction documents should specifically indicate the patterning, mm -hmm. uh, the joinery, and the application of all materials involved in the design. Mm -hmm. And a, a good set of drawings should do that. So. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So did you want that to replace the condition we had prior previously? I think we just, you want to keep the steel trail stuck up, probably? Yeah, so yeah, let's keep that one. Sure. Um, so everything above the exterior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take everything I wrote out and put what he wrote in. Yeah, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Leave that exterior material sentence, Tim. And sorry, I'm totally backseat driving you here with the typing. And then I think instead of patterning of the joinery, it was patterning comma joinery, yeah. which makes more sense to me. Yeah. Okay, and we'll let that sit for a minute and then come back and see if um, it's all still good. Is I mean, I read through all these conditions, but I and I don't believe that anything requiring these materials that you just showed us stay in this. Um, yes, yes, that's that's the case. In, is it in there? 
Or yeah, there should be a standard condition yeah. that requires yeah. the building permit plans to match the plans that are submitted okay, or right. that are um, approved by your commission. And then um, okay. minor changes. So that's why we added the stucco because that's part of, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, in there, there's just a tiny little area that says Equitone. So as long as <laughs> we, um, but the window, the material for the windows, like that aluminum wasn't mentioned in the drawings anywhere that I saw. So, yes, if you are, are there, so add um, that the aluminum shall be included and um, equitone, is that what it is? Is that, is that, is that suffice? Okay. Um, he's, he, the applicant, or the architect was asking if a material board submission um, actually suffices as listing those so they're they're held um, as part of it yeah i think we would want to put in the condition that we want the building permit plans to match the <laughs> color board because they're okay. going to be mm -hmm. different yeah um, okay great i like that design. thank you <coughs> Well, Tim's working on that. I wanted to thank you all for this elevate. This is the greatest section. It so puts this project like in perspective. I think we, Samantha, can we request that staff require this on every project yes. above a certain square footage? That is required. Like, Tim asked us a hundred times. I, you know, the section showing the neighbor's house. Please, it's not as bad as it feels sometimes, and a really measured drawing helps you go through that. Yeah, totally. Um, so with the conditions of approval for number 69 regarding the uh, public right of way, the bicycling language, um, not that I want to obviously require the applicant to be responsible for the whole stretch of Branson 40, or from Branson 40 to water, but is there some way in which we can include that as a potential Rather than, it, I mean, right here, it just sounds like we're just saying in front of their property. Whereas I would like to have it maybe a little bit more sound like, well, yeah, it's not going to really do much difference if it's just a green stripe in front of the property, right? Um, is there a way in which we could maybe formulate some language around, like, I don't know how that would work, because it's public works and not really there's no way to do it right because of the increase in parking you guys don't know this number yet but public works going to figure out this transportation impact fee right? Uh, right which could be like a fair chunk of change let's just say and that would be stored up and like put into remind me kind of like the overall but it's not going to be like the nexus of right by this project right well it Am wouldn't be right? it wouldn't be required as part of this project it wouldn't be like you know, part of their the improvements that they have to install with the building permit, but it could it would go towards like a future, a future improvement on that road. It so, it could go towards. So a, the upside future. is Matt and Claire gather right. all that money and then do some huge project. Right. The downside is it might be thirty freaking years before we right, have enough money to do anything. You know, <laughs> so that's why I was suggest I hear you and I, I was suggesting maybe just right in front. So that it's like two of those little green bike things mm -hmm. that these guys are paying for. Great. So I'd love to see 12. And knowing this team, it might be cheaper to do eight. And if Public Works is saying, yes, that's going to be the hard part of this, maybe they just do some extra to make us all okay. feel good. Okay. Now, if they sell the project to somebody else, who knows? But, uh, you know, I think we're getting there. Yeah. And like the right of way, like it has to be incremental. Like how long is it going to be before Ocean Street is wider? I have no idea. <laughs> but every project, we got to like take our five feet. Make them put in street trees and good, and so yeah, yeah. 
So I, I just, on that same uh, thought, I wanted to change the words bicycle lane to bicycle, what is the word they use? Uh, facility or, you know, it, should, it doesn't need to be a bike lane that's 20 feet long, that would be really dumb. <laughs> but, um, you know, you know, the transportation and public works will tell you what the word is. But a bicycle... Route? Infrastructure. Oh, that sounds too expensive. I don't know, I don't, I'm blank on the word. I mean, we could be very specific, we just say, could, to include two thermoplastic shared lane things in front of the project right now. You know, like the square mm -hmm. with the bike and the oh, screen. Yeah. Yeah. That would be very specific. I don't think it's gonna, they're probably gonna be doing some paving there once they cut those utility lines out anyway. Yeah. I mean, so that's another way you can do. I mean, it would be, I mean, depending on how it goes, it would be, I mean, the parking, because there is on-street parking there, and it would, that would probably, if there is a way that we can, those are no longer needed, then we could have a bike lane. I wouldn't want to crap on you saying we shouldn't have a bike lane. I agree, I agree. Yeah, and I think by the time we're really getting yeah. frontage, we'll have had lots more meetings. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. I like that Shero was the thought, and I think we should do two if Sean's into it. Yeah. Believe me, once the guy's out there with the melter, it's not going to be much more. And that stuff that really has held up pretty well. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm impressed by that stuff. Okay. So the only thing I'm not seeing is the two applicant proposed conditions. And you got the language for that there in there? I think those were entered, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of a motion. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Just walk us through them real soon. Thank you. So we all know what we're buying here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so based on what we have so far, so the provisions of the conditions of approval include number 43. Um, to strike the clause as may be amended. Um, condition 49 uh, to add the clause in, or phrase unless a winter grading plan may be um, shall be reviewed and approved by the city but building and division public works department. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, these additional conditions of approval Exterior material shall be stucco, steel troweled, smooth finish. Plan submitted for building permit shall include information specifically indicating the patterning, joinery, and application of materials involved in the project design. Plan submitted for building permit shall include colors and materials presented at public hearing to the Planning Commission in the as in the Colors and Material Board. Um, maybe it should include the same colors and material. Mm -hmm. um, Number 69, staff shall coordinate with the applicant and other city departments to consider striping of the public right of way to include new bicycle infrastructure, including two thermoplastic sharrows along the property frontage along Soquel Avenue, subject to review and approval by the Public Works Department. Number 70. And minimally two? Is it minimally, just yeah. Two? Subject to. But I was thinking of deleting just new bicycle infrastructure, just saying to include a minimum of two. Because yeah, right. infrastructure just sounds like right. hundreds of thousands of dollars in my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm just making up numbers, you know. Cool. Um, can we change the pattern? <coughs> sure. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then note, I'm not adding conditions about PV or batteries, because that's all just happening naturally. It's going to be all electric, net zero, day one. My code, more or less. I have one comment on the language of number 68. Um, you just, I just don't like how f thoroughly baked that is without any, um, you know, something could happen. Yellow could become a toxic color. Um, you might need a slightly different shade of yellow. Um, and I just like it to say, um, unless approved by, um, it's going to be the same materials that you're bringing us. Um, but there's got to be some way rather than <laughs> taking it, bringing it back. Um, so maybe unless approved by the building official or or maybe it'd be the planning director. You see what I'm saying, Sam? Yes. <coughs> Lee's not here, we might as well volunteer him. Sure. Number 70, no tropical hardwood material, even certified tropical hardwood shall be utilized in the project unless approved for use <coughs> in the project by the director of planning and community development. Mm. Wait, 
what I meant. I think I was going to say um, maybe unless reviewed by the Director of Planning and Community Development. Any variation um, would need to be approved by the Director. Samantha, I know we've written this five or six times yeah. before, but I sure can't think where I'd find it. There we go. That looks fine, Tim. Um, So condition of approval number eight. It already says that. The development of the site shall be in substantial accordance with the approved plan submitted on file. The Department of Planning and Community Development, all aspects of construction was reviewed and approved. Major modifications of plans or extensions mm -hmm. to conclusion may be granted only by the city authority. So maybe we don't need it. Um, well, I think some of the specifics um, are important. Mm -hmm. I was noticing the power of the word, the same materials. I, love I thought the same seemed very strong. Yeah, but I think we need that in this world of um, objective standards. Because uh, otherwise, the, the same, same or substantially effect, similar. It just doesn't like yellow that day. Right. I don't know. But, you know, <laughs> lawsuits begin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I was gonna, I was gonna be happy with substantially similar, yeah. but I understand. What I does like that mean? Same. Okay. Who wants that product that I can't remember the name of? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that up to Emory. <laughs> outside of my area. <laughs> Well, as the chair, you all know I cannot make a motion, but uh, you're all looking at me. Highly unusual, but sure. I just uh, needed to use that restroom. Oh, yeah. And it is is locked. it locked? Come on in. There's one back here. Okay. Do they need, does uh, Jay need a key? Okay. Sorry about that. We know. I'm getting there myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, in my opinion, we should, like, not this project, we should start requiring these full-scale mock-ups, mock you know? These big buildings, like, yeah. my project's over there, every single one. And, you know, like, it's all crammed in the corner, but you can see the windows and how it comes back. Not what you're talking about, but those other details and connections. I don't know. It's I feel pretty, like we'd have to have it at this meeting to approve it, right? Yeah, kind of. I feel like previously reviewed or approved by director of planning and community development gives them an opportunity that's what i that's all i wanted yeah. 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 that's all i wanted was okay. yeah, I agree. some I way to do that, that gives them the opportunity the yellow could fall out of favor yeah. it's true. well yeah. yellow's already fallen out of favor based yeah. on previous Gray, <laughs> those four four so. <laughs> yeah okay yeah uh Okay. I'd love to hear a motion. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm willing to make a motion to uh, approve the application with all the amended uh, conditions of approval, as stated. I'll second. Motion is uh, made and seconded. Any other further comment or discussion? Hearing none, I feel like we should wait for Jan to get back, but uh, let's go ahead and do the roll call vote. I think you'll be all right with the result. Um, Chair Kennedy? Aye. Vice Chair Conway? Aye. Commissioner Gordon? Aye. Commissioner Maxwell? Aye. And Commissioner Paul Hummus? Aye. The motion passes unanimously with all five commissioners in support. First time since I've been on the commission. <laughs> Keep it going, guys. It's fun. I like it. <laughs> Collaboration. Great project. Great project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great project. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, really. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have any informational items? Or you want to run through schedule coming up? Yeah, I do have some um, announcements. Um, so 925 Windsor, that project that you heard previously, um, the, an appeal was submitted. And we are looking at an October 10th city council meeting. Um, and then... Now that it's been appealed, like, we can just go to that meeting and speak in favor of the project if we wanted to. I think like so. we're totally done. Yeah. yeah. Good. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch you. That was the previous project, the single-family home yes, in Seabright. Yes, Windsor. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. The neighbors appealed. Um, and then another project coming up will be a multifamily development on 1800 Soquel. That is 84 units. We're looking around the September, October time frame for that one to come before you. Um, and then yeah, also. May's, May's restaurant site? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
When is that one? Uh, we're looking around late September, early October. Is Matthew Thompson still on that one, or? He's not, he, he, no. Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't be the pretty project. <laughs> we tried. Um, and then another project coming up are some um, amendments to our local coastal plan. That's going to be um, some cleanup items and also some amendments that might be associated with the hotel project downtown um, that's been in process for a while. That one we're looking at also the September, October time frame to come to your commission. And that's all I have. All right. Um, we don't have any subcommittees or advisory body oral reports, nor items referred to future agendas. Um, so I had an idea. I want to ask staff to think about putting this on a future agenda. That's pretty quick. Is now a good time to lay that on you? Yes. So this project and a lot of others, we're going to have all these heat pumps, you know, now because we're all electric. And they make this real, I talked about this several times, it may make that quiet hum. But overall, it's going to build up. I was in Santa Barbara, and it just has that air conditioning hum. So I wanted to ask staff to think about new boilerplate language for condition number 50, which is all new mechanical equipments and yada yada. She'll be screened, visible from the public right away. Can I ask staff to do a bit of research and report back on if we could incorporate sound control into that condition in a way that is not, you know, onerous, crazy, too expensive, and yada yada. Um, a good example of this is the new Marea Sol Hotel down by the boardwalk. Like, super stoked to have that old hotel gone and that new one there. But if you're standing at the boardwalk and you look down, you just see this row of heat pumps and my clean energy heart's like, yay! And then I'm just like, our poor little town's gonna have that hum to it. So if staff could report back, and we could just put this on every project, bang, 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 and um, not talk about it before. I've been all over the place. I used to take away the screens because I thought they were done dumb, you know, sometimes, like in industrial areas, in the Delaware edition, but I'm concerned about this creeping noise. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any other thoughts? Great. With that, I will adjoin this meeting. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, the material board makes it so, so much better.